You gotta dig a little deeper. Ain't got far to go. You gotta dig a little deeper. A king? Some answers? I don't know. Around your soul. Okay. I just, I don't even know what to say anymore. You know how I am. Love me some music. Always gets things going. My name is Mrs. Lawson. Thank you so much for coming today. I can't, I can't even talk about how much I love this story. King of the Parking Lot is such a good one. I just, it's full of adventure. It's full of questions. I just love learning about history. And let's just get going. Learning intention for today is we are learning to identify and use main idea and supporting details to help us summarize and understand the text. We know we are successful when we can identify the main idea of the text, identify the key details that support the main idea, and then we're gonna create a summary. You guys know main idea, this is what we use to help us organize our thoughts, get this written down on your paper so you are ready to go when we get to that part of the lesson. Vocabulary. Today we are learning about monks. Crazy, right? A monk. So over here I got this old picture, an old painting about the time when um, the story takes place, what the monks would look like. Since it was said that when Richard III died in battle, monks took his body away on a horse. What could monks mean? Monks are actually members of a religious group made up of men living in a friary. Um, it, these monks could also be called friars, so they all live together um, and they're a religious group. Oh, that's so weird. I did that out of order. Sorry, everybody. So we're going to skip for a second back to foundational skills and talk about un and in. Remember that these change the meaning of whatever word they come in front of. So let's look at complete. If we, if, well, the word is incomplete, I kind of just gave that away. We already know the prefix is in, right? So I'm going to mark that as our prefix. So we know if something is complete, you have all of it. But if something's incomplete, it means you don't have all of it or something is missing. Now, what about this word? Insincere. Insincere. Let's circle our prefix so we can get it out of the way. Do you know what sincere means? If someone offers you a sincere apology, it means it's real. It means that they mean it. So if it's insincere, if someone gives you an insincere apology, what do you think that means? Yeah, you're right. It's when someone apologizes and they like don't really mean it. That would be an insincere apology. What about uneven? So if something's even, we know that you have enough to give two people, right? You can put it into two groups, but if it's uneven, that means you can't split into two groups, right? You're gonna have one extra. What about unstable? So if you think about it, like a table is stable, right? Like it won't fall over, but if it breaks off a leg, it might be unstable. It's not balanced anymore. So that might be an activity that you get where you have to take this prefix Take it away, figure out what that base word was, and figure out how that word was changed by adding that prefix. All right, now back to vocabulary. Sorry about that confusion. So we are doing two vocabulary words, and that's, these, that's gonna be what, oh, I don't wanna give you the words. That's gonna be what you're doing for your activity today on Seesaw. It is going to be finding, I'll get to that in a second. Let's just focus on the word. D formed and I have you know I'm a Disney fan so I have over here the hunchback of Notre Dame so that you can think about what that might mean whoever the skeleton belonged to his back was once deformed and we got this picture over here hmm so it actually means not having the normal shape or form so if you look at Quasimodo right here his back is kind of messed up and so he is deformed. Now, fragile. Sometimes you get boxes in the mail and they say fragile, handle with care. 
And then in the story, it says, over the next few days, the team worked to uncover the fragile bones. What do you think the word fragile means? Hopefully you said something that's easily broken, right? You have to be careful with it. Now, this is the assignment, what I was trying to describe earlier. So you're gonna put that definition that we just did together, a synonym and an antonym of each. I like to do two of each, two synonyms, two antonyms, a sentence with the word and a picture. So the two words I want you to choose from are fragile and deformed because monks are kind of a weird word. So it's gonna be easier to use those other two. All right, let's get into this story. We left off with them starting to dig in the parking lot to see if they could find the remains, what they found. For four days, archeologists dug two long trenches under the surface of the parking lot. Immediately, they found walls and floors of a building that may have once belonged to a monastery, a place where monks lived and prayed. This was exciting since it was said that when Richard III died in battle, monks took his body away on a horse. Philippus and her team grew more excited. Their next plan was to find the church inside of the friary, and after that, the choir within the church. If they could find the choir, they would look underneath it where sources said the remains of the missing king might lay if he were still buried. After only four days, one of the archaeologists found something else buried under the choir in an area called the walking place. Many years ago, it was tradition for important people to be buried under floor areas where many people walked as a sign of respect. The archaeologist immediately called in more team members to look at it. Pause for a second. Did you guys hear that? They said they purposely buried people under places that you would walk over because it was a sign of respect. That'd be kind of weird to walk over people that died. I don't know. Just a thought. One of them, Joe Appleby, a bone expert, began removing dirt and made an amazing discovery. A human skeleton was under the floor. As she worked to uncover it, two things made her stare in disbelief. First, the size and shape of the bones. By looking at the shoulders and pelvis, she could see it once belonged to a human adult male. Even more amazing, its spine was curved in the shape of a C in the middle. Whoever the skeleton belonged to, his back was once deformed. Joe Appleby knew that Richard III was rumored to be a hunchback, so she called Philippa Langley to show her what she found. Ah, that's so exciting. Okay, this is crazy. Look at this picture. So these are the bones that they found. Now we need to stop and look. What details from the text is this picture showing us? What were they talking about with the bones? Let's look back. Two things made her disbelief. By looking at the shoulders and pelvis, they could tell that it was a man. I mean, we can't really tell that by looking at it. But right here it says, its spine was curved in the shape of a C. Can you see that? Do you see a C? Right here, right? Yeah, I can totally see that. So this picture is here to show you what she's talking about. That his spine, where ours is straight, Ours would go down. His was shaped like a C. Ooh, that's crazy. Now, something else to think about. How does this photo help you understand what these archaeologists and bone experts had to do? Do you think that this just came out of the ground like this? They just picked up the skeleton and sat it over on the side like that? No, right? It was just kind of like what Mary Anning did back when we were reading about her. They had to take every bone out and they had to clean them off and they had to set them in place. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? So much work, like I was saying in the other video. But wow, now that you look at it, I feel like that's like the coolest thing that you could say you put that whole skeleton together. Whew. All right. Philippa couldn't believe it. It was certain proof that it was Richard III, but so far this was, okay, I read that wrong. 
It wasn't a certain proof that it was King Richard III, but so far, this was great evidence. News got out of the skeletal remains had been found under the parking lot. People from everywhere came to see the dig. Over the next few days, the team worked to uncover the fragile bones. Once removed, they were taken to a laboratory for study. In order to prove that these were really the long lost remains of King Richard III, many tests needed to be done. What no one could expect, however, was just how much the results would reveal. So I know how he said yesterday portray only stood for how people are shown in art, but it says right here an actor portrays Richard III. So he, this is art too, like when people are putting on plays or musicals. So this is how he is showing what King Richard III was like in a play. Oh my gosh, that's it. Ah! I just want to keep reading. Okay. So we know that one of the things that we're working on today is summarizing. So to summarize a text, readers can examine both the text and any supporting visuals, so any pictures that are found in the story. So to do that, let's figure out what the main idea is on page 38 in paragraph four. So why don't you pause right now and reread that paragraph. All right, hopefully you should have gotten that done. And when I reread that, I found that the main idea should have been that the bone expert, I don't think I'm gonna say her name, but that a bone expert discovered a human skeleton. So let me, I should have just put this on there because we all know how that goes sometimes. A bone expert discovered, discovered a human, skeleton. And I'm going to apologize if you can't read that super well. Um, oh good, that actually worked out pretty well. A bone expert discovered a human skeleton. We don't know for sure if it is King Richard III or not. Now we need to find those supporting details. So let's look back. And I know it's going to take my writing with me, but it says down here, as she worked to uncover it, two things made her stare in disbelief. So what's the first thing you would put? Let's see if we match up. I put the shape and size of the bones show that the shoulders and the pelvis were the size of a man, because right where I was about to read, the size and shape of the bones, the shoulders and pelvis belong to a man. So that's the first clue that we have that it could be King Richard III. So pause here if you need more time. Next, what's the next supporting detail that we have? Even more amazing, its spine was curved in the shape of a C. What? I still can't get over that. It's super crazy to see. Then what do you guys think the third supporting detail is? All right, pause that video here. I would love if you guys found this last one without me, but let's see if it matches what mine says. King Richard III might have been a hunchback, so that means those go together and this could be him. Man, okay, so the coolest part about this is, is now we could take this to create our own summary, because that's the skill we're working on. So if I was creating a summary, now what I would say is, a bone expert discovered a human skeleton. So the skeleton's shape and size showed that it could be a man. The spine also had a C curve in the middle and King Richard III might have been a hunchback. So they think that this skeleton could be King Richard III. Boom, just like that, we made a summary. You just go through your pieces, put them back together, and there it is. Great job, guys. Now, let's see what we've got here. We are on to your reading response. It is your turn, fourth graders. You're gonna read the first and second paragraph on page 38, which I have below, and you're gonna do this to better understand the search for the body of King Richard III. 
you're gonna summarize that main idea and key details. So if you put it in your main idea and key details, um, let me just show you. So if you put it in this chart, don't leave it in the chart. That's not a summary. This is just how we organize. So make sure once you organize your thoughts, then we turn it into a paragraph. So don't get stuck on that. Now it's your turn. I believe in you. You've got this. See you guys next time. Bye.